A stunning day for women's lacrosse at a stunning new facility. It's the fifth ranked Maryland Terrans taking on the 16th ranked Florida Gators. Brennan Hartlove delighted to be alongside Alexa Wooten bringing you all the action from the new Maryland field hockey and lacrosse complex. And Alexa, when we look at both of these two teams, there's a lot of history between the two of them, including on this field itself. No, I mean, we talked about it before the game. It's definitely going to be an exciting match with the history involved. Like, you know, in 2020, Florida actually ended Maryland's home win streak of 86 games. And then you turn around last year, Maryland beat Florida at the buzzer. Victoria had with a beautiful 17 seconds left. You also look at in 2020 or 2022, Maryland ended Florida's season in the NCAA tournament quarterfinals. So both teams definitely a tight rivalry. In overall program wins, Florida sits right now at three, Maryland at number one. So very excited for today's match. You take a look there at the Maryland Terrapins. They come into this one. Three wins straight to open the season at St. John's at a ranked Syracuse team and home to Drexel on Wednesday. And for Florida, now they are still ranked 16th in the nation, but they are 0-2 to start the year. But when you really look at it, it kind of makes sense because they have played the toughest games of probably anybody this far into the season at number eight Loyola and that was a loss at number six North Carolina and now at number five Maryland it doesn't get any easier for the Florida Gators. No I mean they've played three top 10 ranked teams all on the road so to start <laughs> your season that way this is an extremely good Florida team they've just had a tough season so it's, there's no way you can say, oh, they're 0-2. This isn't going to be a good game. We are set for the opening draw here in College Park for Maryland. It's Shea Ahern, and for Florida, it's Liz Harrison. Florida in the all-black uniforms today. Maryland in the all-white. It's a chilly one, as we always enjoy in the early goings of a spring season. We're underway from the campus of the University of Maryland. Maryland controls the opening draw through Shea Ahern. And the Terps will have the first offensive possession of the morning. Coming across towards the near side is Shannon Smith, the senior for Maryland. And the Terps look to go behind the cage to set up the offense to L. Clevenger. Over to the far side now for the sophomore sensation, Corey Edmondson. Now Maryland looking to work inside. It's Maisie Clevenger. And a lot of traffic and contact in there. And to be called against Maryland and comes back to Florida. Yeah, it looked like there they called a charge against Shannon Smith. So Maryland comes up empty on the op opening offensive possession. Now a chance for the Florida Gators to move forward. You know, maybe notice some differences in the midfield. We'll talk about those and some new rule changes in effect in the women's game this season. But now Amanda O'Leary's team will set up on the offense. Comes up top to Madison Waters. Gators look to move it around. Out to the left-hand side. It's Heller. Well, there's some contact through the center. It's loose on the turf. Knocked around and eventually kept by the Gators. That is Emily Heller, the grad student out of Babylon, New York. Approaching 30 seconds on the shot clock. It's Ava Ty. The shot right into the stick of Emily Sterling. But there was a whistle. And it's going to be a yellow card issued to Maryland. And right here you see driving in. Looks like they called... It's hard to see what they called there. It was called against Corey Edmondson. Potentially some contact as she, Florida's player was pushed to the ground after the shot. So a free position shot opportunity for Florida and Ava Ty. They will back it out. And work it over to the right-hand side. Card was on Corey Edmondson for Maryland. Into the middle of the shot and the goal. Florida opens the scoring here in College Park. And let's see that one more time. Finds her. And you see right there that 
Megan Ball was caught off guard. She didn't see the cutter coming, completely had her back turn, and Florida was able to complete the pass for an easy quick shot at goal, right past Emily Sterling on the right corner. A goal coming from Josie Hahn out of Catonsville, Maryland, the junior. Florida with seven players from the state of Maryland on their roster, so a bit of a homecoming for some of the Florida Gators and contributing to a very, very good crowd here on a chilly Saturday morning. So the Terps find themselves in an early deficit. And we head back to the draw circle. Same two with Ahern and Harrison. Jay Ahern, the reigning Big Ten midfielder of the year. Referee getting both players in position to get us back underway. And always early in the season, you see that sometimes take longer. But the mechanics maybe not in mid-season form just yet, but Maryland controls the second draw of the game. Again, Shannon Smith brings it down the near side. And Corey Edmondson back on the field for Maryland. Head back up top. Clevenger passes to her right to Edmondson. Gets it back, L. Clevenger. Quick ball movement here by the Terrapins. Working inside around the front and scoring is Haley Russo for Maryland. She ties it up at one. Her third goal of the season, and it brings Maryland level. You see right here, Haley Russo splitting the two defenders, a nice shot fake and able to finish low right below Florida's goalie. So Maryland with a quick response, exactly what Kathy Reese and her staff would have wanted after conceding that goal to Florida. That is, in fact, the first shot of the day for Maryland, and it ends up in the back of the net. So we find ourselves at the draw circle once more. Maryland's electric offense coming to life here with a quick response. Ahern and Harrison will duke it out once more. Liz Harrison, the senior from Florida. Third all-time in draw controls for Florida Gators program history. And Brennan, funny enough, Shaylin Ahern is also third all-time from <laughs> Maryland in draw control history. So that will be a fun one to watch for sure in this contest. Florida brings it across this time. They will look to retake the lead. As Florida gets set up, you'll notice some Changes in the midfield especially. A new rule introduced this season with any foul between the 30s being an automatic green card. And that's kind of just to stop the physicality that we were getting a lot of time. Down here's Florida working behind the cage now. Quick around to the near side. And it's lost, batted around, and eventually scooped up by the Gators and Gianna Monaco. Here's Ava Ty, looking to go to work. The Gators behind the cage feed into the middle of the shot. And that time, it was Han that couldn't apply the finish, and it's going to be Maryland ball. And it looks like they've changed the call here as the Florida bench was protesting profusely. Yeah, no, on that, Florida's player, Emily Heller, definitely beat Maryland to the ball on his shot, it's always gonna be the player closest to the out of bounds wall. And Emily Eller definitely was there first and that's why you could hear Florida's players protesting the call. And that Han shot was in fact saved by Emily Sterling. It was tough to see through the crowd of bodies in front. Up top for Emily Heller, six goals away from her career 100. Now coming in the middle of the shot and the goal. Florida retakes the lead. And you see right here, Catherine Flannery, just beautiful execution. Or excuse me, Maggie Hall, beautiful ex execution there. Fakes one way, moves Hall, Sophia, 
Paul is out of the way and able to finish on the shot. And it looks like... Looks like they've changed the call here. And in fact, that will not be a goal. Might have something to do with the stick. So the officials after the goal did a pocket check. And the goal will not stand an illegal stick for Florida. Kathy Reese still trying to get an explanation from the referees as well. Some confusion on the field right now as the officials weren't exactly clear on what the call was, but it looks like it will not be a goal for Florida and Hannah Lubecker will have it at midfield as it's gonna be Maryland's ball now. It looked like Kathy Reese might have sent some players on for the man up offense, but then had to call them back off. Such is the fun of an early season. So we are still tied at one, Maryland in possession now. And we can hear the referees saying they're going to check that stick at the quarter break, which will come in about 10 minutes of game action. Here's Maisie Clevenger behind the cage to May. Now up top for L. Clevenger. And there's going to be a whistle coming from the near side. And that is going to be a three second call against Florida. So L. Clevenger, a free position shot opportunity from the left center hash. Under 10 to play, still tied at one. Clevenger working inside, bounces it down and goes behind. It will go back to Florida. And it was Teresa Bragg right there, able to get closest to the shot after it bounced out of bounds, giving Florida the ball. This is kind of where you see that new rule change come into effect is the defense has to be careful tracking back to avoid those green cards, which would be a one minute releasable penalty and new this year. So still tied at one with a little over nine minutes left to go here in the first quarter. Now Florida works it to the near side. Can't find a way in, has to back it out. I'm trying to come around the front. On top again to Danielle Pavanelli. Just one goal away from tying ninth all time in program history. Here's Sarah Falk. Backhanded shot, backhanded goal. A great finish from Gianna Monaco. And Florida has the lead back. I mean, what a goal from Monica. You see right there the Twizzler with the shot and just gorgeous, getting her back to the goal, able to turn her head and Twizzlers the stick so that it's able to get Emily Sterling off guard. One of the most difficult finishes you will see. Monica made it look easy for her second goal of the season, the sophomore out of Mount Laurel, New Jersey. So we head back to the draw circle once more with under nine to play here in the first. Maryland has controlled two of the three draws so far in this contest. And Brennan, we talked about it before the game. We said both draw specialists, third all time for draw controls in their program. But according to inside lacrosse, Florida right now has the number five midfield unit and Maryland the number three midfield unit. So between the 30s, you have a really great competition going on. So Florida comes down the other way once more. Comes up to Gabby Corey, the freshman. Now tie once more. We go up against Kennedy Major. Gators work it behind the cage. Over to the left side. Now up top for Falk. 
through traffic. Has it knocked down her stick? It will stay with the Gators through Ava Ty. Good cut there from Pavanelli through to the center. But knocked out again. Loose ball. Raked forward by Maryland. And eventually scooped up by Maddie Sterling. A church sophomore midfielder and sister of Maryland goalkeeper, Emily Sterling. A lot of sisters on both of these teams, actually. You have Maisie Clevenger joining her older sister, Elle, in the Maryland program this season. Two Sterling sisters and Maryland, no. They certainly have had a lot of sisters in the program over the years. May sisters, Libby still here, older sister Katie. And now L. Clevenger will get things restarted for Maryland on the near side. Feeds the far post, now working inside a bounce shot and a bounce goal. Sister to sister combination. L to Maisie to the back of the net and Maryland has it tied. And Maisie Clevenger knows how to score around the crease. Right there, L to her sister. You see her gets her body around the defender, able to wide arm the side arm the shot to get it a bounce shot past Florida's goalie. And that's not the first time Maisie Clevenger has scored right around the crease. Really a dangerous spot for her. And you want to force her out. You don't want to let her get inside. So we have a timeout here at the Maryland Field Hockey and Lacrosse Complex. We will step aside 2-2 between Maryland and Florida. holding my breath because I, I was like, I can't talk. No, you're, and you're, and you're doing a fantastic job. Just want to make sure so we didn't say anything. Back here at the Maryland Field Hockey and Lacrosse Complex in the first quarter of action, 2-2 between Maryland and Florida. Brendan Hartlow of Alexa Wooten enjoying this one so far as these two teams trading blows. and Harrison still battling it out. Tied 2-2 in draw control so far. And again, Florida has it. And so we went into that break after a Maisie Clevenger goal assisted by her big sister, L. A dynamic duo for the Maryland Terrapins and Kathy Reese's team. Passes off to the far side. Now into the middle. Quick shot flashes wide. 
And there is a whistle coming from the near side. So we're going to have a yellow card issued. And it looks like it's going to be for Brianna Lamara. Yeah, right there, officials called a check to the head. You saw it. She was behind her cutter trying to get her stick in front of the shot and unfortunately hit the Florida player in the head. So Danielle Pavanelli fixes the goggles and picks up the ball, staring down the eyes of Emily Sterling. A quick chance for Florida. Ends up getting backed out to the near side. Six and a half to play here in the first. Working behind the cage are the Gators. Good move inside, but it's loose on the ground, scooped up and flicked all the way back. And Ty was almost the first to it. And a Florida Gator hit the deck very hard on the far side. Brenda seems okay to continue. And it's up top for Emily Heller. Goes to the right and right once more to Ty. Give it Ty. Coming through the center and there's a whistle against Maryland as Madison Waters was trying to work her way to the cage. Yeah, and that's going to be a shooting space call calling Maddie Sterling, it looks like, for, or excuse me, Megan Ball for shooting space there. When coming in, you have to make sure your stick leads. It can't be your body. Dead center, and that one flashes wide. Florida, a great free position shooting team, actually leading the nation, and a great stop there. It was either the stick of Sterling or Kennedy Major, but nonetheless, it stays out, and Maryland has a chance to clear. There's Kennedy Major on the near side, lobs it all the way forward right into the stick of Aiden Paduzzi. Now Maryland looking to mount an offensive. Here's Hannah Lubecker. Haven't said her name too much so far in this one. Grant student out of Forest Hill, Maryland. Back to Lubecker. Looking to take their time to set up the offense. Shannon Smith on the near side, transfer from North Carolina, now in her third year with the Maryland Terrapins. And now back to even strength, and Maryland can kick things into gear. Lob forward, Lubecker double team, tries to spin out of it, loses it out of her stick, loose on the ground. And eventually picked up by Maisie Clevenger. Eight to shoot for Maryland. Inside shot, and it sneaks in. L. Clevenger gets it with four seconds left on the shot clock to put Maryland ahead. And I mean, that is why L. Clevenger is a captain for this team. That's why she's so dangerous around the crease. You see right there, a quick shot right in front of the goalie. And funny enough, right after that free possession that she missed, I heard her say, her head coach, Kathy Reesader on the sideline, don't ever think twice. You've got this. And right there, I don't think she thought twice. I think she just <laughs> shot it and scored it. So a lot of that play came from Shannon Smith, who you just saw there helping to get the teams back to even strength, and Maryland had to move quite quickly. Smith got the assist on that one. Clevenger, her fourth goal of the season. And you know, with the shot clock in women's lacrosse, you have to be careful. Obviously, they were a man down. Kathy Reese was smart. She realized they had 40 seconds with Brianna Lamoureux coming back in, and you want to take advantage of every position you got, especially when you're going goal for goal each side. So waiting to make it even really was smart by the Terps right there, and it paid off. Eloise Clevenger was able to finish. And now they might have some momentum going forward. Here come the Terrapins inside for Smith through traffic, had it knocked loose. Still a fight for possession, eventually scooped up by the Gators. And some great defense there by Libby May. High pressure to try to win it back for Maryland, but it eventually does go to the Gators. 
Libby May is a great redefender. I mean, when you're playing attack, you want to slow the ball down, especially now with the rule in the 30, because you don't want fouls and to go a man down. Libby May really is key in doing that for Maryland. Teresa Bragg brought it all the way forward for the Florida Gators as they now trail. Two unanswered goals for Maryland and Mando O'Leary's team trying to keep this one close. And Ty just lost it out of her stick and scooped up fairly comfortably by Maryland and Major once more. Major now coming down with a head of steam across midfield. And a successful clear. Here's El Clevenger. Feast to the front. Lubecker low shot and a save there by Finnell. And now Maryland will be able to slow things down. Here's Corey Edmondson. Sophomore from McDonough High School. Now Hench. Lubecker operating from the near side. Sends back, passes off to May. Now Maisie Clevenger. Edmondson on the right hand. A bit of contact there, no whistle. Now Lubecker. 35 to shoot for Maryland. Pass behind for L. Clevenger. Into the middle for May on the doorstep, and she applies the finish. Cool as you like from point blank range, and Maryland has pushed the lead to two. And I mean, great job by Libby May and Elle Clevenger, just working off one another right there. You see May gives it to Clevenger. Clevenger tries to give it a go, not there. Gives it back to May. And then May back to Clevenger. Clevenger <laughs> able to hit a cutting May back door. And I mean, it's just working off one another, creating open space. That's when you're going to see results. This Maryland offense has been clicking already this season. 16 goals in their opening game at St. Joseph's. It was a tight one at Syracuse, just a 9-8 to eight victory in overtime. But then they put up 14 at Drexel in their first home game on Wednesday, in their first home game at this stunning new facility. So L. Clevenger now her 17th assist of the season. Not really anybody close behind her in the standings nationally. To have 17th or your first three and almost a quarter games. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> she broke last year the Maryland in-program, in-game record for assists. I don't doubt she's probably going to break her own record this season. <laughs> Certainly off to a blistering pace. We're under two minutes left to go here in the first. Maryland up by two, four to two. Troops now looking to push that lead even further. Clevenger. Behind the gate, low shot, bounces wide, and into the stick of the Gator. Goes back to Elise Finnell. Regaining possession in midfield is Celeste Forte. She'll pass forward, and the Gators set up the offense. And Brennan, we explained the new rule in between the 30s, really dangerous because if you get a foul called there, automatic green card one minute out, it's really changing how midfield, how the transition in the midfield works because really it's just kind of a straight shot into the attack. Certainly a big, big adjustment for players to have a rule change like that. And Gator lost their footing on the far side and tenacious defense from Maryland, but unsuccessful in the pursuit of the ball. It's a new shot clock for Florida. A bit irrelevant as we're now 30 seconds left to go here. In the first quarter, Florida trailing by two, trying to get something before the intermission. This is up top. Quick stuff here. Inside, knocked loose, but a whistle. And Maryland's able to clear and go the other way quickly. 15 seconds for Maryland, lobbed forward. Here's May, has Clevenger ahead, but a whistle. Clock is not stopped, and Maryland goes quickly. Inside shot, goal! With three seconds to go in the corner. Clevenger again pushes Maryland's lead to three. I mean, 
Eloise Clevenger. <laughs> what else can you say right there? Great shot right to the right top corner. I mean, she did in four seconds last play. Yep. Why not three seconds this play? <laughs> And, I mean, great job by Maryland seeing the opportunity, moving the ball quick, and getting it out to get an opportunity to go up by three before the half. So, Kathy Reese, even with 3.3 seconds left in the quarter, is still as insistent as ever that her team's defense holds strong. And Maryland has an extremely strong defensive unit this season. Inside lacrosse preseason ranked them the number five defensive unit in the country. I mean, you bring in Megan Ball from Rutgers. She's a phenomenal defender. She's able to cause turnover after turnover. And with the speed you have in the rest of the unit, it just leads to ground balls to what we just saw, fast break plays. So Maryland has 3.3 seconds to defend to go into the break with a three-goal lead. I believe that might be Haley Russo in there in place of Shea Ahern at the moment in the draw circle. And she controls that draw. And time expires here on the first quarter of action. It was a tough early going for Maryland as Florida got out to a pretty quick start. But Maryland's offense, no match for the Gators' defense as they lead by three, five to two here at the Maryland Field Hockey and Lacrosse Complex. We will step aside here on Big Ten Plus. You're watching Women's Lacrosse. Florida does a really good job of is they like find a way to find the open cover because Maryland sends a double um like right there you just saw Kennedy Majors came to double with Megan Back here at the Maryland Field Hockey and Lacrosse Complex, Brennan Hartlove and Alexa Wooten bring you all the action. Apologies if we have any technical difficulties and the early goings of the season, such as the excitement of early spring sports action. Maryland out to a 5-2 lead here after the first quarter. It was Florida that got us underway with the scoring. And teams will swap ends. 
And we go again. So, Alexa, in that kind of first quarter, you noticed some pretty interesting things on the defense and how these teams are matching up. What did you kind of see play out there? Yeah, so Maryland definitely always in a man. They like to send the double when they have the opportunity. Florida's been able to find a gap with their first goal coming off of that, and that really had to do with the fact that they were down one with Corey Edmondson on the sideline with that yellow card. Um, but other than that, doing a really good job of closing gaps when they do see the ball inside the eight. And then Florida right now, they've really been shutting down Hannah Lubeck or keeping her kind of out of it. But Eloise Clevenger is just firing one after another, and they're going to really have to try to stop her, which is something every team has to deal with when facing Maryland. Already two goals, two assists for her so far today. Inside and getting in the way of it was Elise Finnell, goalkeeper for Florida. Career high 11 saves last time out in that game at North Carolina. It's now a chance for Florida to try to find something here in the second quarter of action. Maryland's gone on a pretty hot streak in terms of offense, and Florida hasn't really, really been able to find much of an answer. And they're certainly asking the questions, but at the moment, Emily Sterling has all the answers. I mean, what a great job by Emily Sterling. She's such an active goaltender, which is why she's so successful right there. Florida had an opportunity. They had the open hand, but Emily Sterling right away stepped to just grab it right out of the air. Here's El Clevenger. To Russo at the top, goes to her left for Smith. Clevenger to Clevenger. Back to Clevenger. Inside, May the shot, a great save there by Finnell at point blank range. And right there, great job by Fallon George getting the ball out of the air, making sure Maryland didn't have a second chance to look at an offensive possession. So now striding forward is Emily Heller. Three goals in the last game at North Carolina for the Gators. Over to the near side and up top for Ava Tai. Sophomore out of Cold Spring Harbor, New York. Now Heller spinning around. A great save there by Sterling again. Good bit of contact there. I believe again, Brianna Lamoureux, the culprit. Looks like they're going to call a push from behind there. You saw she was caught behind the attacker right there. That was Maggie Hall. And just with that, kind of lost her footing. You could see she lost her balance and pushed her from behind. Maggie Hall fouled by Megan Ball. Two goals in the last game for Maggie Hall, a senior out of Bel Air, Maryland. Looking to attack the cage around. Bounce just wide, but another whistle. This will come from the top of the 12 meter. And right there, you're going to see another call for a push. And Brennan, something to know. Um, Maggie right now has 10 straight games with a goal. So... Definitely looking to make it 11. And a very good opportunity to do it here from dead center. Florida the best shooting team from free position in the nation currently. Just about 87% dead center through traffic and into the back of the net for not a goal. And you could see it, Emily Sterling there motioning that she actually came in the crease. You have to be extremely careful with that when shooting free positions because you're so close to the goal. You don't want to run through the crease because that automatically means no goal. It's always tough to see from our vantage point as we are also quite low to the ground. So always a challenge to see when somebody might have just inched into that crease. But Maryland escapes unscathed and now comes down to the offensive end. Here's Corey Edmondson. And you're seeing Shaylin Ahern come back into the game. She's been out for a little bit, maybe giving her a break as she did take every draw control starting off in the first quarter. Edmondson the shot and she buries it into the top of the netting. And Maryland continues to dominate the offense. 
Edmondson, her seventh goal of the season in Maryland, now up by four. I mean, just the power Edmondson has, her shot is so strong. It almost like she wills the ball into the goal, no matter where she is on the floor. And let's see that one more time with the replay. But there, Edmondson has the shot right before the other defender slides in and just the power behind it. Edmondson is such a key scorer for Maryland. We saw it against Syracuse, and we're probably going to see it again today against Florida. Corey Edmondson, former McDonough player, coached by the great Taylor Cummings, Maryland legend and frequent broadcast partner here on Big Ten Plus. And Taylor and her husband Greg actually just welcomed a little girl to the world, Sawyer, recently. So congratulations to Taylor and Greg. On a new addition to the Maryland lacrosse family, as well as the Big Ten Network family as well. And, Brendan, one thing to kind of take note is Maryland subs a lot now this season. It used to be a thing where you would never see a Maryland player come off mm -hmm. the field, but Kathy Reese said it at the beginning of the season. They have so much depth on this team. Yeah. They're able to do that. They're able to give their players breaks so that they are 100% to go every single time they're on the floor or on the field. So Maryland back on offense following Corey Edmonton's seventh goal of the season. Here is Edmondson again. Back-to-back -back finishes. Corey Edmondson can do no wrong. Eight goals on the season, two today, and Maryland continues to fire on all cylinders. And I just talked about the power behind Edmondson's shots. How about the finesse right there, weaving in and out of the defenders? You see right there, one way, switches, weaves in. Able, I think she actually shot it behind yeah. her own head. <laughs> I mean, her ability just to move with the ball is phenomenal. A photo finish for Corey Edmondson. And we have a timeout here in College Park called by Florida's. Maryland is now up by five. We will step aside. You're watching women's lacrosse on Big Ten Plus. We welcome you back to the Maryland Field Hockey and Lacrosse Complex on the campus of the University of Maryland. 7-2 is the Terrapins lead over the Gators. Six straight goals for Maryland at the moment. And Amanda Leary had to call a timeout there just to try to stop the bleeding a little bit. But Maryland goes right back on the offensive coming out of that break. Brennan Hartlove, Alexa Wooten. Excited to be here for early season women's lacrosse action. Corey Edmondson on the ball now, back-to-back -back goals for her. Already off to a great start in her sophomore campaign. Here's El Clevenger. Working behind the cage, goes over to the far side, back to Clevenger. Now Edmondson. 
Goes up top to Lubecker. Now May. Oh, Clevenger. From X goes to the near side to her sister. Now Lubecker. Terps circling the Florida cage. Inside to Edmondson. And that one's kept out. Another good stop by Elise Finnell. Redshirt sophomore out of Deal, Maryland. And a great job by Florida's defense forcing Edmondson out of the eight. That way she had to take that shot off balance and it makes it easier for Fennell to make that save. Florida trying to successfully clear. And they do so. Six goals unanswered at the moment. Florida trying to find a little bit of a spark on offense. Comes up top to Ava Tai. On the left hand side. And we're a few seconds away from returning to full strength. And Teresa Bragg comes back on for Florida. Here's Ty, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Works on the left hand, but lost it in the process. Scooped up by Maryland through Shea Ahern. Great move to try to keep it. Eventually gets it off to her goaltender. That one loose off the turf and scooped up by the other Sterling now Kennedy Major. Into the offensive zone. L. Clevenger. Two goals, two assists already. Now Russo. L. Clevenger. Shea Ahern now. May working behind the cage. Actually, that's Georgia Hoy that's in the goal now for Florida. So the freshman out of Fairfield, Connecticut, making her second appearance in three games for Florida. Here's May. Passes to her right. Now up top for Edmondson. On a hat trick. And that one skims off the top of the crossbar. And so Maryland will get a new shot clock with that. Here's L. Clevenger. Two goals, three assists here in the first half. Here's Edmondson trying to get an inch of space. Force back out. Here's Russo. Edmondson rounds the corner and a good save there by Hoy. And then it's like Edmondson hit the deck hard after that one. It'll be a yellow card issued. And right away, as you saw Edmondson on the ground, you saw the official motioning for the Florida player. That was number 48, Paisley Egan, coming off the field. Looks like it's going to be a foul to the head. So Corey Edmondson back up to her feet. Still maybe struggling just a little bit. I mean, Edmondson is definitely a tough player. You saw it after her last shot, fell to the ground, gets right back up. Definitely able to put her body on the line, but head to the head, it's going to hurt no matter what. Edmondson elects to back this out as Maryland has a player advantage for two minutes. Now behind the cage, May. Here's Clevenger. And aggressive goaltending there by Hoy. Paid off in the end. And I mean, a great job by Hoy and by Finn, or by Hoy by getting her stick out, seeing the cutter and trying to interfere. I mean, that's Maryland's sweet spot. They want to hit the cutter right there. And great job by her seeing that and trying to make some interference. So Florida gets it across and has a little under 90 seconds to kill on this penalty. So the 
Eater offense in absolutely no rush. They trail by five here in the second quarter. Maryland has two here in the second. Florida yet to get on the score sheet. It was a very bright start for Florida, getting the opening goal. And then once Maryland tied it up, they immediately took it back. And since then, it's been all Terrapins. And I mean, Brendan, you can't forget Florida's goal not counting twice, actually. Yeah. Once because of an illegal pocket and secondly because running through the crease. So those are goals they could have used. Yeah. Fine margins of error in this one. Could look quite different indeed. Under 30 seconds left on the penalty, but 18 on the shot clock. Gators have to do something here. Fizzed into the middle, brought down really well. A shot turned away. Not far enough, though, as Florida now has a new shot clock, and they'll be able to kill off the last 10 seconds. And you'll see right now, Maryland's in a backer defense with the man up, ready to send the double whenever. But as the card is released, the Terps are going to be even now, and they will match up man to man. So it's up top to Sarah Falk, grad student out of Fairport, New York. Now on the left side. Working it around. Now Hall had it knocked out, but a foul will be called against Maryland. And that is going to be a shooting space call. So Maggie Hall on her last attempt was called for going in the crease. And going to make her restart. In fact, it is Gianna Monaco. The right hash mark comes inside, trying to get the better of Sterling. Had it knocked out of her stick, but loose and eventually scooped up by the experienced Brianna Lamoureux. But gifted back to Florida now. And there will be a whistle. And it will be a yellow card issue. Yeah, and it's going to be a check to the head for Brianna Lamoureux. I mean, you saw right there as... Hall was coming in. Lamro trying to get her stick in front of her to slow it down. Hit her right in the face. Hall actually grabbed her goggles, motioning to the ref that she'd been hit in the face. And right away, that's going to be a yellow card every time. So Pavanelli, Pavanelli will get things back underway. Just overheard Kathy Reese say, I've never had this many yellows in my life. If that's any indication of how the coaches feel this game is being officiated at the moment with a little under five minutes left here in the first half of action. Gator working behind the cage over to the near side. Passes off to Emily Heller. Heller gets it back. We'll reset things from the top of the 12 meter. Now Waters. And you'll see Maryland's actually now in a bit of a zone defense trying to make up for the man down. And that pass was a bit heavy intended for Sarah Falk and was turned over. Maryland picked it up and will now come the other way. Again, still trying to kill off that card as Major sprints forward. And... I mean, that's one thing you have to love about Kenny J. Major. She is so fast. Yeah. I mean, she just takes off. And, you know, she was the top-ranked defender coming out of the 2021 class. Fortunately, did have to redshirt her freshman year. But with a year under her belt, Kathy said it. She's ready to go. She started every game last season for Maryland. And has certainly picked up right where she left off last season in the start here of 2024. 30 seconds left on that card. And 40 seconds on the shot clock for Maryland. Here's May. May being defended by Ashley Dyer, the freshman out of Elkridge, Maryland. Now Russo. Kate Seitz into the game, senior at Glen L, Maryland. And the teams are back to even strength. Corey Edmondson charges on, and Maryland's offense speeds things up. Eight seconds to shoot. Over to May. 
Wraps around behind the cage now. And comes around to the front. The shot, and it's saved there by Hoy. A big time stop for the freshman. And there's a fair number of whistles out there. And so what that was actually, Elle Clevenger coming behind the crease, saw Hoy about to clear it, tried to get her stick out in front as an attempt to try to block the clear, and a foul was called, you see right there. And right there before that, you see Libby May rolling the crease, trying to get a shot off before the buzzer. Hoy has come into the game and in about eight and a half minutes made three saves. Under two minutes left to go here in the second quarter. Scoring has certainly slowed down here in the second. We had seven combined goals in the first quarter of action. Just the two here, both in favor of the Terrapins. Waters spinning onto the left hand. Force back out, goes to her right. Thirty seconds for Florida to work with. Trying to come around the front, force back behind. Tipped around, it was Sterling's stick and it was loose and a dangerous one. And eventually it's trapped by Aiden Paduzzi and Sterling's able to scoop it up as we're under a minute to play here in the second quarter. And a great job by Paduzzi being aware of where the ball is and able to stop it, making sure no loose balls rolled into Maryland's goal. Another clear by Major. Working up top to Victoria Hench, now Haley Russo. Under 30 seconds to go here. Shot clock effectively off for Maryland. Now sights on the far side. Looking inside, forced back out. Now Hench looking to drive. Leaves her defender in her wake, ditches some contact into the middle, forced all the way back out to the left-hand side. Now May. Lost out of her stick, batted around, and Russo scoops it up as time expires. So it was a bit of a slower second quarter, but we certainly got our money's worth there in the first as number five Maryland leads number 16 Florida 7-2 to two here at halftime. We'll step aside to be back with second half action. You're watching Women's Lacrosse on Big Ten Plus.
Lacrosse Complex getting set for second half action between Maryland and Florida. Brendan Hartlove and Alexa Wooten bring you all the action from a revamped plex here in College Park. And Alexa, it was a really exciting first half. Kind of slowed down a little bit there uh, in, in the second quarter. But how do you kind of expect Florida to try to get that offense going again? I mean, right now, Hoy has been a huge component yeah. of Florida stopping Maryland on defense. Held them to only two goals in the second quarter. So definitely starting on the defensive end, that's the kind of momentum you want to bring with you into your attack. On attack, really, they just need to do a good job of taking care of the ball. Florida a couple times has actually just turned it over, losing the ball while trying to go to goal, and that's something you want to minimize. Also, they found success in cutting, catching Maryland defenders off guard with their first goal and then also getting inside right in front of the crease, creating space. So that's what they're going to want to look to do in the second half. So we are underway here in the third quarter of action between Maryland and Florida, the fifth and 16th ranked teams in the nation, respectively. Florida will go right to left in the all black uniforms and they will try to get the scoring back going. They're held scoreless there in the second quarter. It's been over 20 minutes of game action since Florida's found a goal. Six unanswered for Maryland there to close things out in the first half. So Amanda O'Leary certainly trying to will her team on to find a bit of a spark on the offense. And also just to kind of update you on something that did occur towards the end of that first half. It was two cards on Maryland's Brianna Lamoureux. So she is out of the rest of this contest. A loss for Maryland defensively, especially. No, I mean, Brendan, her speed, her ability to play off with her defenders is going to be huge for this defense. So it's definitely going to be a missing piece in the second half. Bounce shot went wide. We'll stay with Florida on the far side now. Up top to Emily Heller. Through traffic in and a good save there by Sterling. Batted away is Heller a prolific scorer. Still without one in this game. And I mean, once again, just seeing how Emily Sterling being active in her circle is just making her an even better goaltender. Up top for Heller. Trying to spin away from Maryland's defense. Now Hall forced back out. Time by Megan Ball. Now behind the cage with 35 seconds on the shot clock. Pass up top. Heller again. Switches on to the left hand. Forced back. Now fed into the center and some contact there as Danielle Pavanelli was trying to work her way towards the cage. Florida's bench very insistent that that should be a yellow card. Looks like the cards have stayed in the pocket. And you see Maddie Sterling confused, and it's because Maddie Sterling was forcing her out. Sterling actually ran into ball, not Florida. So definitely some confusion there with the contact. So Pavanelli barreling down. The low shot goes wide and will stay with the Gators. 15 on the shot clock for Florida. Bounced around, scooped up. Time winding down. Here's Waters. Low shot, and it sneaks in. And finally, Florida has an answer. It wasn't pretty, and it took until five seconds left on the shot clock. But eventually, Florida pulls this one within four. And I mean, a much needed goal for Florida. We talked about 20 minutes scoreless, no points on the board. If they're going to want to crawl their way back, this is what they need to do. And on that shot, you see the celebration after. Great job by Water. She was forced off of the eight, but still able to side her on the shot to get it low enough to pass Emily Sterling's stick. Second goal of the season for Madison Waters. And we head back to the draw circle between Liz Harrison and Haley Russo. Kathy Reese seeing something in that draw circle, prompting that change from Shea Ahern to Haley Russo, both very capable draw specialists and I mean one thing to note about Haley Russo is she's six feet tall yeah. height is an advantage on the circle you're able to reach up over with the extension of your stick so maybe they just want to get a little more height on that draw circle Liz Harrison standing at 5'8 for Florida Maryland leading in draw control 7-4 to four ahead of this one you can feel a bit of life breathed into the Florida Gators team 
Russo scoops it up. Harrison still down on the turf behind the play. She will trot over to the near side. Before that one, it was 26 minutes of scoreless action for Florida. Now Maryland on the far side. Lubecker draws the whistle. There was a lot of contact coming there. So Hannah Lubecker, who had to register a point in this one on the free position shot. From the left-hand side. Quick release and a quick finish. Lubecker rifles it into the back of the net and Maryland pushes the advantage back up to five. And I mean, that is a position for Lubecker on the free position that is just beautiful. You see it right there. She has the inside hand. One step just whips it right, undercuts it, and right into the top right corner of the goal. That position on the left side when you're a righty is just, you're, it's perfect. You have the inside advantage. You're able to get a quick shot off, and it's harder for the defenders to get a stick in front of it. An absolute laser past Georgia Hoy. Didn't have much of a chance at that one. And Maryland's lead is 8-3. to three. Interestingly, both teams have 16 shots ahead of that one. So Maryland now leading in that category by one. The stats are fairly even across the board, but Emily Sterling's been called into action eight times to the five times split between Fennell and Hoy in the cage for Florida. But then Brendan, here's where you see the difference. Maryland right now, eight draw controls to Florida's four, nine ground balls to Florida's four. And those are little statistics that can make a big difference because it means possession. Certainly shows that first half was the Lowest scoring half for Florida this season. Now three games in. That one was fizzed towards the middle, but nobody there for Maryland and comfortably won back by Florida. Striding forward is Hannah Heller, sister of Emily. We're in the number 14. Works it onto the right hand and eventually will be scooped up behind the play by Danielle Pavanelli. Still one goal shy of tying ninth all time in Florida program history. Gators taking their time, trying to find an opening. A long shot, and it's buried into the back of the net by Paisley Egan. Second goal of the season from distance this time. And again, Florida finds another to chip away at the lead. And I mean, what a shot for Egan. You see her, she steps in, and she just lets it rip. We'll see that one more time. Egan right there catches it one step and just rips it overhead right past Emily Sterling. I don't even think Sterling exactly knew it was coming from that position as the ball was passed from X all the way up to the top to Egan. So we head back to the draw circle. This third quarter already more lively than the second. There's a goal apiece here. Maryland's still with that big goal advantage, but Certainly Florida looking much better here in the second half. Whatever Mendo Leary and her staff said to Gators team in the locker room is paid off. And Maryland controls the draw through Russo. And gets into the offensive zone. And I mean, a beautiful grab by Russo right there, you know. Didn't play as much her freshman and sophomore year. Takes time to build your way into such a storied and historic program, but definitely finding her footing now and really excelling. Clevenger pulling the strings from behind the cage. Two goals, three assists so far in this one. Now Lubecker, most recent goal scorer for Maryland. Thought about it again, and it'll be a shooting space call against Florida. 
And a smart play by Lou Becker saw the two defenders there, knew it was going to be harder to split them, and saw the shooting space advantage and fake the shot to get the call. As beneficial as it was on the opposite side, it's equally as difficult on this side for Lou Becker, the right-hander. And she puts that one wide left of the post. We'll stay with the Terrapins. You talked about all the advantages of being on that left as a right-hander. Yeah, but if you flip that, it's now a really tough angle. No, and you saw it by her shot because you almost have to twist your entire body to try to get angled with the goal. Really gives the goaltender the advantage because she can stay outside. Fed into May, who rifled off a quick shot that skimmed just wide. It will stay with Maryland. It was Clevenger that fed the ball to her, and she will get things back underway. Almost a repeat play as May flash in front of the cage. And that one's knocked loose, but knocked down to the turf is Corey Edmondson with 17 seconds left on the clock. Maryland, another good opportunity. Edmondson on a hat trick, two goals already in this one and two impressive finishes. One in the top netting and one wrapped around her head. Can she complete the hat trick? And Good defending there from Florida to collapse on Edmondson and force the shot behind and now a chance to escape. Egan through traffic and Florida's bench wanted one of those calls that we talked about with those green cards. Now Egan almost took it herself, but now the whistle comes against Maryland. And the official signaling to her head, not exactly sure if they called a check to the head. It looked like just a check against the body. And yeah, it looks like it will stand as just a check against the body as outside of the eight, it's not going to be a free position. Paisley Egan, most recent goal scorer for the Florida Gators. Now up top to Pavanelli. Ty. Trying to get on the right hand. Forced back out. 50 seconds. Plenty of time for Florida. Pavanelli. Forced over to the right. Back behind the cage. Quick ball movement here from Florida. Up top. Here's Falk. Forced back out by Edmondson. Now Pavanelli. Scoop pass there. Now Falk trying to work through traffic. Maryland defenders collapsed on her, and Egan draws the shooting space call. And I mean, we just seconds. talked about it with, oh, excuse me, sorry. We just talked about it with Lou Becker. And same thing, knowing when you maybe don't have the shot, but you have the shooting space call, it's a smart decision by the attacker to try to get that free position on the eight meter. So another advantageous location for Egan. Up against Emily Sterling. Rifles it in. Two goals here in the third quarter for Paisley Egan. And Florida coming alive here in the third quarter. And I mean, we talked about it. Power behind a shot is such a useful tool. If you can stand there and just whip it off and get it past the goalie, that is a skill to develop. Right there, you see it. Paisley Egan, one step, just overhead, whips it right past Sterling. The speed, the power behind it, and the just execution. So Egan now with two goals in this one, three on the season. And Florida's brought it within three. Back to the draw circle we go. Still Russo and Harrison battling it out. And that one's a pretty easy win there for Harrison in Florida. Here comes Waters now. Being chased by Megan Ball. All of a sudden the momentum beginning to shift a little bit here at the Maryland Field Hockey and Lacrosse Complex. Very good crowd on hand. For an 11 a.m. start on a bit of a chilly morning. 
I mean, Brennan, it is Maryland. <laughs> they love lacrosse. I'm not surprised that they're out ready to go. Not exactly Florida weather. No, definitely. You see Egan right now in leggings, probably used to Florida sun. Not the case <laughs> in College Park yet. Maryland does really well in the defensive end to get a stop in. And picked off in the midfield by Florida. So we'll turn things the other way now. And that's really the first time all game we've seen a change of possession in between the 30s because both teams are really trying yeah. not to foul to avoid that green card. And I mean, right there, you hear head coach for Florida calling for them to pump for shooting space. The refs are looking for it. Yep. So if you can use that to advantage, I mean, they're making the smart decision. Here is Madison Waters. Passes off to the right now. Worked inside. Backhanded shot. Goes over top. Seen a couple of audacious attempts from both teams in front of the goal today. Six and a half to play here in the third quarter. Maryland up by three, eight to five. Florida looking to continue to chip away at that. They're outscoring Maryland three to one here in the third quarter. Here's Waters. Shot, goal, it sneaks past Sterling. We have a game in College Park as Florida's brought it within two. We have four goals here in the third quarter mounting a comeback. And one thing Florida's done is they've used their strength behind their shot to their advantage right there. You see her just whip it right away. She's not even two steps off the eight meter. They've seen they have not been successful close around the crease, unable to really circle the crease at all since that first shot, or excuse me, the second shot in the first quarter. So now they're using their power and just getting that hand open and just whipping it. And they're finding success with it. That success is come primarily here in this third quarter as we have a timeout in College Park. Florida's brought it within two. Maryland leads eight to six. You're watching Women's Lacrosse on Big Ten Plus. Things are starting to heat up here in College Park despite the chilly temperatures as Florida has really come alive here in the third quarter. Now trailing just by two, eight to six here on Big Ten Plus. Brennan Harlow and Alexa Wooden really enjoying this one because it's kind of been a tale of two halves so far. Uh, and you kind of look at this third quarter, what has either Florida done really well or Maryland not done as well to get to this point? Well, I mean, def um, on the attack, Florida has done a great job. We talked about it before going into the timeout. They weren't finding success inside the eight when it came to scoring. So instead, they started shooting right on the eight or outside of it. And that's where they've seen these three goals. And what Maryland's defense needs to do is they need to be stick to stick. They can't give an open hand on a shot because clearly Florida can finish. And I mean, on the attack side for Maryland, they just haven't really had a lot of looks at goal. They had that one great shot by Anna Lubecker on the free position. But other than that, they really haven't had a look at goal. And Hoy's been phenomenal. She's really shutting them down. There's one thing I was going to mention is Florida now breaks forward. There was, it seemed to be a good bit of contact, but I now break into the offensive zone. What I was going to say is that Florida's used two goaltenders so far. They've played both about the same amount of time at this point in the game. And Elise Finnell, who was the starter and had 11 saves last time out in about 19 minutes of action, she made two saves but did concede seven in that same amount of time now played since Hoy's been in there. She's made three saves and only conceded one. So that's been a big game changer. And sometimes when you have goaltenders 
that are of you know similar caliber. You just have to go with the hot hand, and that's certainly what Mando Leary has been doing here defensively. Now Florida looks to out something on the offense. Let's go, Let's go, Ashley Gonzalez. On top with Heller. Going to get on the right hand. Distant shot spiked off the pipe and ricocheted all the way back out and eventually scooped up again by Florida, Madison Waters. And this is something I want to add, Brennan. Florida's been aggressive. Yeah. They are just going after everything. Had the first turnover in transition. We've seen every ground ball. They're going after it. And we just talked about how Maryland had the ground ball advantage. Now it's only between three. Tides certainly shifting here as one knocked out of the stick of Heller, scooped up by Maryland. At the time it was a sophomore Nevo Farrow out of Catonsville, Maryland. Glenel Country School, actually coached by Brian Reese, after Reese's husband at Glenel Country. Now the Terps come down to our right hand side. I feel like we haven't even looked this way on the field in, in quite some time as it's been fairly Florida dominant. But here's El Clevenger behind the cage. Four and a half to go here in the third quarter. It's up top with Libby May. Here's El Clevenger. Quarterback of Maryland's offense, if you will. Pass all the way over to the far side. Lou Becker. Forced up top to Maisie Clevenger. Clevenger to May. Back to the elder Clevenger. Well, spins to the far side, passes off to Shea Ahern. Approaching 20 seconds on the shot clock for Maryland. Ahern keeps it herself around the near side, ran into some trouble. Now 15 for Maryland and a loose ball. It will stay with the turf, but they got eight to do something with it. Here's Hench. Three seconds, low shot, low goal! As time was expiring, two on the shot clock. Victoria Hench, her first of the day. Maryland's left it late a couple times, but they've certainly found success. A lead back to three for the Terrapins. And we'll see it right here. Victoria Hench coming in, spins outward, throws it low, and just whips it right, right past Hoy. I mean, great job just getting the ball low, seeing Florida's defender having her stick high, gets it low, gets the free hand like we've talked about. Florida getting the free hand, able to make those wider out shots. Right there, Victoria Hench just pulled one from their playbook, getting her hand free, only this time low. Almost looked like she had run into too much trouble, and the play might have ended there. She was able to salvage it, and a great finish for her third goal of the season. Control still in favor of the Terrapins, 10 to 6. Battle on the far side of the draw circle. It's won by Florida. Errant pass and it's going to be a call against Megan Ball. And so that's going to be. One of those green cards. Kathy Reese pleading to the officials that nobody had possession yet. Still a lot of confusion just surrounding this new rule. Yeah, so with the rule, when there is possession, if you foul within the 30s, automatic green card, minute out, Kathy Reese right now is pleading to the officials saying it was off the draw. No one actually had distinct possession of the ball, so it shouldn't have been a green card. And it looks like the card will hold as Florida is now up as Megan Ball takes a seat on the sidelines. Kathy Reese still trying to find some clarity. sure if we ended up getting that clarity that was 
saw. Nonetheless, Florida possession. Way to our left with under three to play here in the third. In a three goal game. Fed inside. Pavanelli finds the back of the net. Now tied ninth all time in Florida goals. And that puts her just a couple more points closer to being ninth all time in points too. So definitely a big goal for Pavanelli. A clutch moment for the senior. And you see her right here cutting in, her teammate able to find her a quick fake and able to move Sterling to finish off the shot. And you can see after the goal, Sterling's actually talking to the officials right now about an issue inside the crease. Not exactly sure what's going on, but the goal will count and it looks like it's gonna be a draw between Maryland and Florida. So they've come to some kind of conclusion. Pavanelli now her third goal of the season. Donna Monaco got the assist on that, her second of the year. And again, we go to the draw circle. The tension building here in College Park, a two goal game so far between number five, Maryland, and number 16, Florida. We mentioned earlier that was a man up goal by Florida following that green card issued to Megan Ball. It is releasable, so teams back to even strength. And this draw will be scooped up by Shannon Smith. Terps play through the first whistle. Well, Clevenger. Side Kate Sites into the game for the Terps. Hench, now Smith, and May. Clevenger to her sister, but lost it in her stick. And a fight for possession is eventually going to stay with Maryland. They'll get a new clock as well. I mean, great defense there by Maisie and L checking the ball out of bounds, causing it to be Maryland's ball. Maisie, if at first you don't succeed, try again. Denied by Hoy on the first, but gets the rebound, if you will, and tucks it in to push Maryland's lead back up to three. Maisie Clevenger, her second goal of the day. And right there, you see it, Maisie Clevenger rolling the crease, bounces off, gets her own rebound, and there we go, a low shot right past Hoy. And we talked about how dangerous L. Clevenger is at that exposition. <laughs> Maisie Clevenger just as dangerous. I mean, talk about St. Joseph's. She had a shot that was probably on the goal line extended. I don't actually know how it was humanly <laughs> possible to get the ball in the goal, but she did it, and that is a sweet spot for the Clevenger sisters, no doubt. Clevenger sisters certainly... Love to leave anybody watching speechless. It runs in the family. Fourth goal of the year for the freshman. Maryland needed that one. So the Terps controlled the last draw through Shannon Smith. It's that far side of the circle. Jockey for position, tipped around. And Smith again, a great spin away. Smith on the left hand, the shot flashes wide right, will stay with Maryland and Kate Seitz off that back fence. And I mean, Smith has really been phenomenal this season in getting the ball from the draw to the attack for Maryland. She's quick with it and she makes something happen right away. It's her sixth draw control of the game so far. Top to Edmondson. Now Victoria Hench. May gets it on the left hand side. Looking to go one on one. On the left hand. Behind the cage. One minute to go here in the third. Clevenger to Edmondson. 
And Maryland gets the call. So Corey Edmondson, two goals already. Corey Edmondson, the sophomore from McDonough. From left of center to complete the hat trick. And it saved another big time stop from the freshman Hoy. Her fifth save of the game. And here comes Florida. Streaking down the other end through Paisley Egan. Off to the near side, into the middle, the shot, the goal. A lightning fast transition from the Florida Gators. A big stop on the free position on the defensive end. They come all the way down the other side and tuck it home. You see it's a quick pass and a beautiful finish by Monaco. I mean, talk about a transition and that is how you create offense off of defense. Quick ball of movement, moving it fast, not even giving Maryland a chance to fully get back. So a two goal game with a little over 30 seconds here left in the third. Gianna Monaco, third of the season. And Florida outscoring Maryland six to three here in the third quarter. Fairly easy draw control for the Gators and Emily Heller. You can certainly feel the buzz from the Florida bench and the Florida faithful. There's Waters, two goals so far for number two. On the right hand, the shot, and she finds the back of the net. A hat trick for Madison Waters. And Florida is within one. And I mean, the same exact spot. Madison Waters whips it with that outside hand, gets herself free from the stick. And you can see it. Let's see it one more time. Right there, Madison Waters cuts right away. Free hand. She sees it past Sterling. The ball goes. And you can tell she is pushing her team forward in this game. You said it, hat trick, just one after another, giving Florida the momentum they need to get themselves back in this game. 8.3 seconds left on the clock here in the third quarter. We've seen end of shot clock goals. We've seen end of quarter goals. How will this game be decided? Maryland needs this draw control coming up. The last thing they want is Florida coming down and tying in the game before going into the fourth quarter, bringing even more momentum than they already have. And that one will take us to the end of the third quarter. What a finish we're going to have here in College Park. A one-goal game due to a blistering third quarter from the Florida Gators. We will step aside here and we'll have fourth quarter action on the other side. Maryland leads Florida 10 to nine. You're watching Women's Lacrosse on Big 10 Plus.
got a tight game here in College Park. 10 to 9, Maryland's advantage over Florida at the moment. Brendan Hartlove and Alexa Wooten here for Big Ten Plus, and we've seen a lot of great action so far. Florida fighting for their first win of the season in their third straight top 10 matchup to open the 2024 campaign. Doesn't get much tougher than that. Maryland looking to make it a perfect 4-0 start, and it all comes down to the final 15 minutes. And Brendan, we talked about in the opening the history between these two programs. I'm not surprised <laughs> we came, Florida came back. I mean, we're in this tight game because these two programs battle it out every single time they're on the field. Last time these two teams met, as we talked about a year ago, Maryland just eked out the win 14 to 13. Give you a sense of how close it was. And the only time that Florida has gotten the better of Maryland was on this field in 2020. Also a one goal game, 15-14 on that day. We get the fourth quarter underway with Florida. Looking to continue that momentum out of the break. They'll go from left to right in the all black uniforms. That bright orange numbering. Isolation for Heller on that far side. Now Waters. Hat trick today for the Gators. Now Maggie Hall through traffic and stopped by Maryland. I mean, a beautiful move by Maggie Hall getting inside on that crease, but an even better check by Maryland. And bodies hitting the turf as Maryland was trying to get it out. Florida made it really difficult, and the Gators will have the ball. Maggie Hall will get us back underway. We talked about she has 10 straight games with the goal, yet to score so far today, but a player of her caliber, you certainly would not rule it out. And I mean, Brennan, we still have a little under 14 minutes left, plenty of time for a bunch of more goals from both teams. Working behind the cage. Here is Hall. Around on the left hand. The shot saved there by Sterling. She traps it down to the turf. Ninth save of the game for the first team all Big Ten goaltender. Now the other Sterling sister brings it up for Maryland. Here's El Clevenger. Two goals, three assists so far. Let's go, team. A lot of contact there, but they're going to say she stepped in the crease, and so it'll be Florida ball. We make her back it up, though, to get the restart underway. And that there was Kate Seitz. You saw her was able to get her defender behind her, but looked like she slipped at the last moment, unable to finish, and that's what led her to fall into the crease. Florida gets it forward and will set up the offense starting on the left-hand side. A 7-3 third quarter brought the Gators back into this contest. Here's Hall, long pass up to Waters. Now Emily Heller, three goals in the last game at North Carolina. Held scoreless so far. Working at X, back over to the near side. 30 seconds for the Gators. Hall kicks things into gear on the left hand. A lot of contact from behind, no whistle at the moment. Round to the near side this time is Pavanelli. Now working right behind the cage, off to the left hand side. 15 seconds for Florida. Waters spins on the left and puts that one over top. Six seconds for the Gators. Knocked loose, scooped up at the depth, saved by Sterling. Right as the shot clock was about to expire, the Gators were able to get something off, but Maryland's goaltender to the rescue once more for the 10th time today. 
And you saw right there with Marilyn doing a great job of getting a stick on water, Waters, making sure that she didn't have her hand free, able to actually deflect it out of bounds. Hench gets it forward for Marilyn. Now Marilyn working with the goal line extended back all, out to the far right side up top to Shannon Smith. Now Sites onto the left hand, forced back outside the eight meter. Clevenger kicks it over to the right, back up top to Hench. Forced onto the left hand, comes up top to Lubecker. 30 seconds for Maryland. Lubecker, going to weave away from Waters. Clevenger, oh, Clevenger around the front, the shot, the goal! Hat trick for Eloise Clevenger to go along with three assists, and Maryland has pushed the lead back up to two. I mean, are we surprised? It's El Clevenger <laughs> to give Maryland a goal. Let's see it right there. You see her. She fakes one way and then actually comes back around and is able to finish the shot. Great job by El Clevenger. And one thing to note about her is her footwork is phenomenal right there as she's rolling the crease she gives a fake like she's going to turn back and then turns right back the direction she was going getting her defender off balance and that's why she is so good whether it's she's assisting a goal or she's scoring herself her footwork is always to a t sixth goal of the season for l clevenger a clutch moment from the now senior and we'll see Shay Ahern return to the draw circle for Maryland. She started the game off in there, and Haley Russo put in a very good shift. But they go back to the reigning Big Ten midfielder of the year. A little over 10 to play here in the fourth quarter. Both players jockeying for position. Liz Harrison still in there for Florida. Maryland still leading in draw controls 12 to nine. That gap has closed a little bit. Perhaps one of the reasons behind Ahern going back in. And that one is scooped up by Florida through Sarah Falk. Florida coming quickly the other way. Pavanelli. Behind the cage now. Just a reminder if you missed it when we talked about it earlier, two yellow cards for Maryland's Brianna Lamoureux has her out for the rest of this contest. There's Paisley Egan trying to get the better of Shannon Smith, spins back on the right hand. Shot, goal! Another one for Paisley Egan. A hat trick for her today. And she's brought it back within one for the Florida Gators. I mean, just the precision from Paisley Egan. She shoots and she knows where she wants that ball to go. We'll see it right here. Able to get around her defender. A nice little move. Gets free. Able to place it right past Sterling on her offside. I mean, Paisley, Egan, and Waters have just been demons to Sterling this entire half. But Maggie Hall kept quiet. And Danielle Pavanelli held to just one goal. The supporting cast has certainly stepped up. Jay Ahern trying to win this one for Maryland to swing the tides back in their favor. It's been predominantly Florida momentum here. And a very easy win for Liz Harrison. And Brennan, you alluded it, alluded to it, the draw controls getting closer and closer. Maybe why we're seeing switch ups on the draws. Maybe why we're seeing Florida come back into this game. Draw controls dictate possession, and possession is huge in women's lacrosse. 
Florida has controlled all three draws that we've had here in the fourth quarter. Player hit the deck right in front of the goal, but here's Hall through traffic. Low shot, and there it is. 11 straight games with a goal for Hall, and she brings this game tied at 11. And you can see she is just amped up right now. Let's see that right there. Hall completely fakes out Halls and is able to finish right in front of the crease. Even fakes up Sterling on that. Sterling diving for it, but Hall is just too quick with the finish. Senior attacker from Bel Air High School. Back in her home state. And certainly causing trouble for Maryland. Talk about how she just got that first goal of the day, but she certainly has not been absent from this game. Kathy Reese elects to go back to Haley Russo at the draw. And what's crazy right now is it feels like here at the Plex that there's maybe a minute left in the game. Yeah. <laughs> we have almost nine minutes left in this game, but it is so energized, especially from Florida's bench right now. They can feel the momentum they're building. The ball was trying to come through to win it for Maryland, but it will be Florida possession. Once again, and a chance for the Gators to take the lead for the first time since it was two to one. Out to the far side for Sarah Falk. Lobs it all the way over to Egan. Egan on the left hand. That pass just a bit off the mark. Couldn't find the stick of Falk, and it goes back to Maryland. A crucial possession for the Terrapins. And again, you just kind of see the passivity that's sometimes needed in that midfield with that new green card rule. I mean, it is completely changing yeah. how transitions work. It, it, it looks completely different. Fairly uncontested and almost understood that unless really an errant pass or losing the ball out of the stick, get it's back. not going to turn over. Just get back. Right. <laughs> Here's L. Clevenger. Three goals, three assists. Corey Edmondson. At the top. Edmondson still on that hat trick. The two goals in pretty quick succession in the first half. On the right hand, 14 on 14. Now Clevenger. James towards the near side. Finds inside the shot, the goal! Libby May puts Maryland back in the lead. And I mean, talk about a more Libby May shot. <laughs> Libby May loves those quick, sh quick stick shots. You'll see right here, Maryland moving the ball. Clevenger able to find a cutting May right here. Hits her. Not even a cradle. May catches right into the goal. And that is a Libby May shot to a T. She loves those quick stick shots. So that goal will send us into a timeout. Maryland has the lead by one with under seven to play. 12 to 11. Don't go anywhere. You're going to want to see the end of this one. You're watching Women's Lacrosse on Big Ten Plus.
It's going to be a thrilling finish to this one in College Park. Number five versus number 16 in a tight game that is almost certainly going to go down to the wire. Brennan Hartlove and Alexa Wooten have been enjoying every second of this one as it's really been a thrilling contest in Maryland. Before that timeout, Libby May got her seventh goal of the season, the 19th assist of the year already for Eloise Clevenger in just four games, which is absolutely ridiculous. She leads the nation. And I mean, Brennan, you just talked about Libby May getting that goal, putting Maryland up by one. It is going to be pivotal that Maryland comes up with this draw. They want to just keep extending this lead. They don't want to give Rucker, or excuse me, Florida an opportunity to keep coming back. And unfortunately, it looks like Florida will be the one to take that draw in Maryland's case. It felt like that draw was not just to win possession, but to win momentum coming out of that timeout. Six and a half to play. Florida has only gotten the better of Maryland one time in history, just four years ago on this very field by a single goal. What I'm saying is we've been here before. A tight game between Maryland and Florida, two of the most experienced and winningest coaches in the history of the women's game. Here's Winters, already on the hat trick for Florida. Already has the hat trick for Florida. Faduzzi defending, low shot saved by Sterling. Big time stop from the Maryland goaltender. And she will circle her own cage before passing forward. And Ball has to kind of take that one off the torso to bring it under her spell. But again, that territory where the defenders kind of just have to back off. And I mean, you can see it. The defenders hanging their stick. They're trying they, to put the pressure they right. can, but <laughs> they're not going for it. And it's also muscle memory, too. These girls have played their entire life with it being kind of the old rules where you're able to make things a little difficult. Now essentially being told that you will be at a significant disadvantage at a crucial time in the game if there's any kind of contact that's called there. Nonetheless, and I mean... I can bet you coaches say you defend until you reach that restraining line, and now they're oh, like, yeah. don't touch them. Yeah. Certainly has changed the game so far in this young season. Here's Smith behind the cage. Clevenger trying to wrap around the front. Can't do so. Forced back out to Corey Edmondson. Two goals for the sophomore thus far, which is on to the left hand. 20 seconds for Maryland to shoot. Here's Russo, lost possession, knocked around, and eventually scooped up by Maryland, and Edmondson, eight to shoot. Knocked forward, scooped up, Clevenger! And a lot of contact there between Clevenger and Hoy, and perhaps a Gator defender as well. That was Eloise Clevenger trying to Salvage the possession for Maryland as time was winding down and she's back up on her feet holding her right side Looks like Hoy and the other involved Gators Unaffected Yeah, and Florida will be um, awarded a yellow card Celeste Forte taking a break on the sideline as Maryland is now up one Here's Eloise Clevenger From dead center her team a one goal advantage. Whistle goes, the Maryland Superstar puts that one over. It will bounce off the fence and still a fight for possession. And the whistle against the Terrapins, so the Gators will escape unscathed there. Yeah, right there, Haley Russo called for a push while fighting for that rebound after the shot. So it stays a one goal game, 12-11 with four to play here. As the Gators kind of struggling to get it out of the back at the moment. It's still with Georgia Hoy in the Florida crease. And we're gonna have a timeout called here by the Florida Gators as Mando O'Leary saw that it wasn't really working too well for her team to escape there. 
Yeah, I mean, when you're a man down on a clear, you're already trying to space out, but Maryland now is able to put a defender actually on the goalie, adding that out pressure. You saw Lou Becker was actually able to tip the first clear. Maryland wasn't able to grab it, and that's why it went back to Hoy. But smart by O'Leary to just take a second, have everyone calm down. It's a one-point game, four minutes left. Every possession is going to count. And so if you're Amanda O'Leary in that Florida huddle right now, what is your message to the team? You're down by one, but also Maryland's a team that can kind of light it up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, it's your ball. You're going to want to move it up the field, get it in your offensive end. You have a card, you're down one. You don't want Maryland, you don't want to let Maryland double team you, so you want to move the ball fast. And Maryland does send the double when it's there, so you want to have quick movement. Maybe see, depending on how much time is left on the card, can you make it man on man situation? But right now, they've really found success creating ISO shots. So maybe getting all your girls on one side, having one take it. I mean, we saw Hall have great execution there with hers so right now i think o'leary really just needs to get her team ready to maybe get another goal on the board and then they've been successful in the draw if they get that draw the momentum is staying with florida and the four people in that frame right there you just saw could play a pretty big role in how the rest of this game plays out and as we've talked about a really really good crowd on hand here for this Second home game of the season for the Maryland Terrapins. They started the year on the road as we sat at St. Joseph's, a 16-3 victory. And then a pretty difficult win for them over number five Syracuse in overtime, 9-8. So Maryland's been in this position before in such a close game this season. And for Florida, they haven't really experienced that close of a game just yet. That game at number eight Loyola, that was an 18-10 loss for them. And then on the road, at North Carolina, the number six team in the country, that was a 19 to 10 loss for them. So Maryland's kind of been there, done that. For this Florida team, they're not necessarily accustomed to being in this position. No, I mean, this is their first time where they're put in this position where we're right there. We need to take advantage of it. Like you said, the other two games, they were really trailing behind majority of the game, never really got the footing. Here they have it. And one thing to note, you brought up Maryland's win over Syracuse. That win came down to defense. Maryland locked down defensively, and Emily Sterling came up huge with a big point-blank save against Emma Ward. That's what Maryland needs right now. They need their defense to be locked in. That defense will be tested here. As bolting forward is Emily Heller. Again, Maryland kind of having to just give her space. And the Gators go on the offensive. Here's Waters. Hall has it all the way over to the right-hand side. And it looks like they are going to see if they can make it an even playing field, taking advantage of every possession. They don't really want to try to go for it a man down. About 30 seconds left on that penalty. 20 seconds on the shot clock. They'll have to do something. Here is, in fact, that something. As Heller got some contact pretty high up. And so, Emily Heller, a fantastic opportunity from dead center on the free position has scored everyone so far this season. Staring down the eyes of Emily Sterling. Bounce shot, great defense by Maryland, deflected behind. Stays with the Gators, eight to shoot. Out to the left. Four seconds. And that shot goes wide. A massive defensive stop for the Maryland Terrapins. And that right there is the defensive lockdown Maryland needs. First off, a phenomenal job by both defenders getting their sticks in. I mean, they both double blocked that shot. And then great job by Maryland's defense forcing that last shot outside of the eight meter, making it a far off shot that Emily Sterling didn't even have to reach for. So now the Terrapins will look to move forward. Lou Becker. Worst over to the near side, and we are, as we said, back to full strength now. 
El Clevenger. El Clevenger tiptoeing the crease. Shot inside. Russo shot block. May the shot also put wide. Can't tell if Hoy got a touch on either of those from this distance, but new shot clock for Maryland. Desperation defending for the Florida Gators. And I mean, talk about a sprint. Both Florida and Maryland players running as fast as they can to be the first one for that rebound. Maryland to come up with it. And they needed that. They need to score off the possession. They want to extend their lead with just 120 left in this game. 35 seconds on the shot clock for Maryland. Holding up top with Hannah Lubecker. Now Maryland begins to go in motion. Lubecker, one minute to go in the game. Terps still up by one. Lubecker spinning onto the right hand. Forced to pass inside. May the shot saved. Timeout called by Florida. They rush to the officials. And that is a big, big stop on a golden opportunity for Maryland. A couple bites at the apple. Talk about Georgia Hoy. Oh my <laughs> goodness. That was three point blank shots by Maryland. Three point blank saves. She just got her body in front of the ball every time forcing those long rebounds. And Maryland had a couple goes, but Hoy said not today. And it's going to be Florida now with an opportunity. 44 seconds left. We're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. One goal game with less than a minute to play in College Park. You're watching Women's Across on Big Ten Plus. A one goal lead for the Maryland Terrapins over the Florida Gators with 45 seconds to play. The star of the show for Florida so far has been the senior goalie, George Ahoy out of Fairfield, Connecticut. Absolutely obliterating a career high in saves. It was previously four. She had had that three times last on the 22nd of April, a season ago at Butler. And like we said, she's off to a great start here. Seven saves and 40 minutes played. The clock begins, and here comes Florida. Maryland doing everything they can to avoid that green card penalty. And 30 seconds to go. Off to the near side. Quick movement here. Here's Hall. Inside the shot. Tie game. With 20 seconds to go, Florida has drawn level. A stunning conclusion to this game. And let's see that right there. Finds Egan wide open right in front of Sterling. Four goals for Egan today. I mean, talk about a performance. And now we have a timeout called by Maryland. 
They need to think it over with 20.9 seconds left in this one. I mean, going back to Egan shot, Sterling, that is a hard goal to save. I mean, she is right in front of you, wide open. And Egan can score outside the eight meter. Talk about <laughs> right in front of the crease. What did you see from Maryland's defense that allowed her to get so wide open in such a great spot? To be honest, it happened really yeah. fast. And it looked like Maryland's defense almost was a little bit in shambles. They didn't know where everyone was. Everyone was and you could see Florida coming full steam ahead. It really looked like they hadn't fully matched up at that point. And that's why Egan was able to find that open space in the middle of the eight meter. So you have 21 seconds left if you're Kathy Reese. It's 12-12. What do you even try to draw up to come back into this and, and maybe steal the win? Well, you can't even... First, you have to talk about the draw. You have to win the draw. Yeah. She is saying to her team right now, we need the draw because you have 20 seconds. You don't have time to let the other team come down and try to get a stop and then go on the opposite end and try to score. You need the draw right now. I think a lot of Terps have had the hot hand today. Corey Edmondson with two, Eloise Clevenger with three. Hannah Lubecker, I mean, she scored the game winner against Syracuse. You never know who it's gonna go to. They need to win this draw, get it quick, and score a goal. And you even kind of saw as both of those huddles broke, Maryland, stoic, serious, Florida jumping for joy after a season that's been such a difficult start for the Gators with those big losses against very difficult teams to take the number five team in the land down to the final couple seconds. And Brendan, like you mentioned, they haven't had close games. They have to be excited to be in this environment. So Shannon Smith now in there for Maryland in the draw circle. The third Terp in there today. It remains Liz Harrison for the Florida Gators. And this draw almost scooped up by Florida, but they're gonna call the foul against Maryland. So Florida ball. Can the Gators do it again? Fourteen point nine seconds on the game clock. And the Gators get it through. Behind the cage now. Over to the near side. Here's Hall tripping inside off the crossbar. And time expires on regulation. My goodness. The Gators inches away from again stealing the victory in College Park. We'll catch our breath. Overtime action on the other side. 12-12 between Maryland and Florida.
Back here in College Park for overtime action between Maryland and Florida. Just to remind you of the rules, two three-minute periods, and it is sudden victory. It could end in a second. It could end after a few minutes. Maryland's second overtime game of the season. They were able to get the win at a ranked Syracuse team in the second game of the season. First taste of extra lacrosse for Florida this season. And an immediate timeout called by Florida after controlling that draw. So a chance for the Gators to talk it over. And you can see the Maryland players still fighting to try to get the ball back after the draw controlled. Thought they were able to get the check, but the timeout by Florida, the timeout call by Florida had already been established. We talked about for the majority of this game, Maryland had had the advantage in the draw circle. That has flipped. It is now in favor of the Gators 15 to 12. We've seen three Maryland players in there so far today. We started with Shea Ahern, went back to Haley Russo, back to Shea Ahern, and then we saw Shannon Smith there towards the end of regulation. But again, Florida getting the possession coming out of the break and a chance for both coaches to draw something up and try to keep their team in this one. And Brendan, you mentioned it. They had the overtime against Syracuse. It actually went to the second period because neither team scored. And that had a lot to do with Maryland's defense. They completely shut down Syracuse. I mentioned it. Emily Sterling's save against Emma Ward was a big save for her in that period. It kept the Terps alive. They need to know where these key Florida players are at all times. Florida was able to tie this game because Maryland's defense wasn't marked up. They need to be marked up here. Terrapins have the advantage of the reigning Big Ten goaltender of the year between the sticks for them. So we are set to return to game action here in the first overtime period between Florida and Maryland. Florida's only ever win over the Terps came on this field four years ago. That time they ended a 86 game home win streak for the Terrapins. Chance to spoil the party again. Here's Heller. Worked outside, into the middle, around the front. Here's Hall trying to get an inch of space. Flip pass to Egan. All behind the cage again. Here's Heller. Heller shifting onto the right hand through traffic. The shot, the goal, Florida wins. The Gators again come to College Park and sneak out the victory over the Terrapins. Their first win of the season. It's been a tough path so far in 2024 for the Florida Gators. Maryland, their third top five team, top 10 team that they faced and they get the overtime victory. And I mean, we've talked about it, three games on the road, three games against top 10 opponents, and for Florida to come out and win it against Maryland, I mean, what a fight the Gators put up today. You, I think most people thought after the first quarter it was going to be Maryland all day, and Florida fought its way back and was able to pull off the overtime win. And let's see that game-winning goal one last time. Right here, you see her. Comes off, able to get the hand free and right into the top right corner past Emily Sterling's stick. It is Emily Heller to win the game for the Gators. Three goals in the last game on the road at North Carolina for Emily Heller. She was held scoreless for the entirety of regulation, but she finds the winner when it matters most here in College Park. That will do it for us here at the Maryland Field Hockey and Lacrosse Complex. For my partner, Alexa Wooten, and our entire Big Ten Plus crew, I'm Brendan Hartlove signing off again. Your final score in overtime, number 16 Florida takes down number five Maryland. 
13 to 12.